Hi everyone, welcome to the optimization course and in this course we will be primarily focusing on several important concepts that are relevant to optimization domain. We will initially begin with an introduction to major concepts and important concepts that are required for you to understand the paradigm of optimization and the framework of optimization and how it is being used. So we will initially begin with concepts and then going forward, we will talk about different types of algorithms and other important concepts that you need to be knowing. So before we delve into the algorithms, let's try to understand with an example problem what optimization is. So here in this video, uh, the video that you have here, uh, uh, you can see that there is a carpenter that carpenter is trying to fabricate essentially a wooden drawer. So he is using a plywood and you know, he is trying to basically construct a drawer. So in order to construct a drawer, one of the things that you can see in this video that he is trying to you know, have this rectangular pieces which he is trying to assemble. And if you count the number of rectangular pieces, you will see that there is one, two, three, four and the fifth. There are five rectangular pieces that are basically being cut and now he will basically use an assembly process and using this thin plywood he will try to create the drawers. Now it turns out uh, that you know this uh, carpenter is basically going to supply this drawers to a housing project and this is a large scale housing project in which there is 2000 houses that is being built. And each of these houses need roughly close to 50 you know, uh, of these drawers. So as you can see, the order that he has roughly uh, is equal to you know, 100,000 pieces of these drawers that he's going to make. Now, if he can you know, come up with a strategy in which when he is building the drawers, if he can um, minimize the amount of material that goes into making each of these drawers itself, then that will help him significantly save the cost and the overall profit that he will make on the contract is going to be higher. And the idea is if he minimizes the amount of material that goes into making the drawers, then you know essentially it will minimize the overall cost of the drawer construction per piece. And now when that scaled to 100,000 pieces, you know that will be even more beneficial and cost saving. So the problem that we want to understand the optimization is with respect to helping this carpenter design and we actually fabricate a real drawer in which we are interested in minimizing the overall material that goes into making that drawer. So this is a drawer that will go you know uh, in the housing project. So if you take the same problem and if we go on right the drawer or the tray that he is going to make the one of the constant that is there that it has to have a specific volume and for example it has to store one liter oops. so the volume of the drawer is fixed and that has been you know specified by the contractor so this is that's why you will see that we have written this capital V which is the specific volume and capital means it's a constant and this capital V might be you know basically you know you might have to have one liter volume or some specific volume that needs to be specified and also because of the ergonomic issues and because of the ergonomic constraints, you have to fabricate a drawer which has a very, very specific height and that how it is also fixed. So this capital H that you see is fixed, right? So this height has to be maybe, you know, six inches or 10 inches. So this height has been fixed, you know, by the vendor itself. So these are the two things that he cannot, you know, play with because the volume is fixed the height of the drawer because of the ergonomic things that you're pushing, uh, it has fixed. But you know, one of the things flexibility that he has in terms of construction and in terms of design with this problem is that he can choose any length and the width of the drawer that goes into making that drawer itself, okay? So again, we have an illustrative figure which we have drawn with respect to the same problem and you know that this height h is equal to is fixed, right? This height is h is feet fixed, right? But he has this two variable, which is the length variable right here, 
and we have the w variable which is right here these two variables he can play with okay and he can select any values for these two variable as long as its volumes add up to be a specific volume that we have okay. so the question is how we go about designing right so let's take this as an example problem and try to formulate this problem as a mathematical problem that we have so let's move on to the next slide where we'll see how we can you know formulate this problem itself so if you look into this problem right what information that we have got the information that we have is essentially you know our capital v is the volume right so volume is what length multiplied by width multiplied by height that's it and this v is been given and other information is given that the height is has to be of specific height which is given as capital so anything that you see as a capital on this side is essentially a constant value that you cannot play with but small you know letters are essentially the variables that you can play with right so if i take this information which is length into width into height is fixed and this v is maybe one liter and this height is 10 inches then how do i you know create a solution and how do i use this mathematical equation to help the you know this carpenter is what we are focusing on so if you take this one of the workable solution given these two equations are there that i can take this lw multiplied by h is equal to capital v and i can write that equation as this where lw is equal to capital v by h and i know that small h is also fixed is equal to capital h so i can substitute this capital small h by capital h so we have capital v by capital h now remember capital v is constant capital h is constant so ratio of two constant is going to be constant and what is what is denoting by c so essentially we have an equation which essentially looks like lw is equal to c right so those are the two variables that we have and this is essentially a constant that we have to satisfy right so this is the equation that we have now how can i use this equation to solve for this problem okay so the idea is either i can pick a value of l okay and that will you know could be used as to solve this problem as this so i can do this this substitution and i pick a value of either l or w and solve for other and right? that's how we can do right so the question is how many solutions we have for this equation okay so one way to think about this problem is if you look into this equation lw equal to c in you know maths there is a you know geometric formula which is widely used which is x y is equal to c right and this is an equation for hyperbola right this is a common equation so you can see x and y is a variable where c is a constant and that is a you know equation of hyperbola and that's exactly what this equation is right two variable multiplied is equal to c so if we look, look into the you know the geometrical nature of this equation you will see this will essentially give me this hyperbola and the solution to this equation or solution to this equation is i can take this graph right and i can pick any point right for example i can pick this point on the graph that is one solution i can pick another point on this graph which is here so i can call this as l1 w1 i can call this as l2 w2 and those combinations l1 w1 and l2 w2 combinations are essentially few solutions that will satisfy this equation that we have so now my question is looking into this plot and looking into this equation how many solutions do we have for this problem now if you look into this right you will see that this there will be infinitely many points that will lie on this hyperbola okay so essentially the answer to my question is there will be infinitely many solutions that will satisfy so there are infinitely many combinations of l l and w different values which when multiplied together will be equal to this constant is going to lie on this hyperbola and all of them right this point this point and multiple points so for example if i pick point this uh, this point right here right we pick this point right here and so on all of these points are essentially going to be solutions of this equation so there are infinitely many solutions that we have okay so one thing that i want to note that this equation has infinitely many solutions okay now the question is does that help the carpenter 
And just by writing this equation and knowing that you have infinitely many solutions, can you help the carpenter? 